Hi everybody, welcome back to another cottage renovation video. Now finally it stopped raining, the sun's come out and it feels so much better. Just head into the cottage and let's speak about what I'm going to be doing. So as mentioned in the previous video, above the front door we've got a crack running through there and a bit of repair work around here. Just basically filling in the cracks where there's been a bit of movement over the years. Now normally I mix it up by hand but because I can't sort of bend over too much with my back because I'd injured well I'd injured it 20 years ago and I aggravated it a little a little while back a couple of weeks ago so yeah I'm gonna have to go and buy myself a mixer now I've been able to do that because of all the money I've raised through the calendars so I've got my shopping list I'm gonna pop down to a Brico in Laval and get some tools and some materials so I can get started back on the cottage again so yeah still got to take it a little bit easy but if I buy a few things that make my job a little bit easier then that's a win-win so I'm going to go and get a paddle mixer so I've got to keep bending down and uh, yeah we'll start digging out these cracks and getting them filled in I've got the fireplace cracks to do as well there's lots of jobs that I can like I said get on with so I'm back home let's take a closer look see what I bought come with me we've got one of those new bucket and one of them get the mortar out of the bucket Okay, yeah, not a badly priced thing really. It was less than a hundred euros, and it will certainly do the job what I need it to do. A 1200 watt unit variable speed yeah I'm well pleased with that thank you all once again for all your kind donations throughout the year buy me a coffee patreon and just you know for watching the channel you know you all play an equal part in supporting me and the channel and the project so thank you again okay right I'm ready to mix but before I do that I've got to do some chiseling so I'm gonna get set up with that get those cracks chiseled out ready for the lime mortar So once again this video is powered by EcoFlow Delta Pro. Okay let's put it to the test. What I'm going to do is do a little bit of hand chiseling and I'm going to get the Kango out as well and use the electric chisel attachment. Okay let's get set up. That's better, it's all chiselled out. We'll give it a light brush, a little damp down, and we'll get some um, lime mortar knocked up. We'll get that filled up. That top stone is rather loose, so yeah. Caught this just in time.
very important to make sure it's dust free and give it a damp down. Let's give this a test run. Hopefully it'll save me bending down and uh, that bit of strain off my back. I've got to come up a little bit higher on the other set of ladders, but basically we're just working the line mortar into the joints. That hasn't got to be neat because this is going to be rendered over, it's just exercises about getting it well into the joints, striking it in as much in as possible. But at the same time I don't want it to look a mess so I will tidy that up right let's get up a little bit higher and just do this area here and we'll look for any other areas that need a bit of fill in so I was thinking to myself after I knocked this batch up I thought hmm that seems really creamy and well mixed and I remembered I had a bit of fairy liquid mixed up in the water <laughs> that makes it very pliable Okay, up we go. I'm still not quite as nimble as I was a few weeks ago, but I'm getting there. Got to be mindful of what I do still. Strict orders not to lift too much. I do find sometimes that helps. Sort of pulls me back literally into line again. Yeah, even though I'm going to insulate this wall with a, a stud work and uh, well insulation, it might be lamb's wall or something like that, but I'm still going to render this to hold it all together just to consolidate it, give it a bit of strength. Yeah, we've got a storm out of nowhere. Changing so quickly. One minute sunshine, boom. But I mean, looking on the news and around the world, there's lots of you that are getting it much, much worse than we're getting. So I'm not, not complaining. Just an observation. Okay, that's what we got to fill in. The trouble is the floor is so uneven at the moment. It slopes down there. Or to get a level footing. That's better, I'll use a little ladder. Sometimes it's best just to fling it in. So that's that repair job done. That's okay, like I say, cosmetically it hasn't got to be, you know, anything special because all this wall will be rendered in lime. And uh, yeah, that will just consolidate it and hold it nice and tight together, let it breathe, which, you know, is going to stop any stones moving above the doorway. It's a little bit precarious outside. Let's take a look outside. <coughs> yeah. There's a bit of pointing to do above the lintel. Just around this area. Um, yeah, I'm not going to remove this now. I've checked it out, it's pretty sound, so yeah. We just get this pointed up, not today, because we've just had a really heavy downpour. I had to stop and cover some stuff up. 
Um, it's holding out, but we're losing tiles because of the wind. You know, we've just been hit by a big storm. I'm speaking to the roofer tomorrow, um, and we're going to discuss the plans for getting this sorted out. So, yeah, that's in the pipeline. Until then, I'm going to be working inside. Now, for my next job, I think I'm going to start preparing these massive oak posts. Now, the oak posts as discussed, they go in oops, each side of the fireplace to support it, so I can take that acro down. And before I do that, these have got to be sanded and got ready. Um, now what I'm thinking, I'm not just going to leave them square, I'm going to put a chamfer on them. And I hope to pick up the detailing, you can see here, they chamfer the edge of the beam until it comes down to like a stop. So that there, I think I'm going to pick up on that detail and replicate that on the post. So this would be the base once it's cut to length. That will sit on the stone and then we'll have a gap and then we'll start the chamfer about here and then come up. Now we'll uh, end the chamfer around there so it gives it a square edge there and that will be what goes underneath this part here on the fireplace. So column down here all the way down to sit on these massive great granite stones on the base and then at long last I can take this out then I can get all this leveled up and pointed but until I do the roof on top I can't do this because what's happening because it's an open chimney and I haven't got the flue liner and the cap on top the water's coming down so I don't want to start doing the pointing on the half and then get water damage come down on it and mess it all up because it's still a bit sooty up there maybe until I get it capped off so what the plan is um, once I speak to the roofer we're gonna have a measure up of the flue liner get that get that put in the uh, chimney void get the cap on top and then just leave it hanging down the bottom I'm not going to put the new wood burner in yet I'm just going to use my old wood burner so that can go inside the flue and then that way I can work on this area and then once all the rooms nearly done we'll get the new wood burner in place so yeah that's the plan so I've got a bit of sanding um, I've got some routering on the edges of these beams so I'm going to get set up um, these these timbers are probably two to four years old. Um, they've been aged outside as well, so they've got a bit of patina on them. So let's give them a sand up and see what they come up like. I'm sure they'll be fine, and then we'll get a nice seal on them. Oh, and I have got my new machine to try out on here, so yeah, I'll get that set up. See what sort of finish we can get. Now this is the new tool that I've bought. I've used it above the fireplace on the timber there comes with various attachments. This one's the sanding attachment. I've got like a soft wire brush, which I've done the stones with. That is this one. It's brass, so it's not too sort of heavy, but I think it might be a bit too heavy for this. But I'll try the sanding attachment first to see what sort of finish we get. I'm not after a perfect sort of looking piece of wood with no marks or stains on it. It's got to be in keeping with everything else in here. But at the same time, I need it smooth and looking nice. So don't think I'm going to need that one. I'll try the sanding one first and then, uh, yeah, see how it comes up. Right, once again, we are powered by the Delta Pro. Um, this is how many watts? Uh, 1300 watts so no problem for this unit so it goes up to 2.3 kilowatt no problem okay all right all rigged up let's give it a go and no i'm not being sponsored by far tools <laughs> i may contact them but yeah it's a very important consideration doing sponsorships for companies because well the finances on a youtube build when you're doing it yourself on a restoration project can soon sort of engulf you really. I mean, I've got no budget set aside. It's only what, you know, I can raise through sales from the Etsy shop, stuff I make, the videos I do. So it has to be self-funding. You have to buy a vast array of tools. Admittedly, I've got most of them, but 
sometimes you need certain tools for certain jobs. Maybe I will look into approaching more companies. I don't want it to be like an advert, you know, for their their products, but at the same time there's a balance there. So I think most of you understand, I mean, I probably may have been a bit more delayed if I wanted to go off grid. Uh, lucky enough, EcoFlow got behind me from the start and backed me. I mean, if I had to save up for a unit, you know, there's a balancing act there to be done. So, yeah, it's a, it's a fine line to tread, but just got to keep pushing forward. So I bought this myself. Um, it's not too bad, you know, it's got plenty of power. Depends on what job you're doing. This one's got the sanding attachment. Uh, it's not as fierce as I thought it was. Maybe the wire brush is the job when you want to remove material fastly. I just want to smooth these off and see what they come up like. So we'll start off with this and we'll see where we go with it. But there's plenty of attachments available for these, which is uh, what really drew me to it. You know, it's not just one tool for one job. It's versatile. It can be for a whole host of jobs, stonework, woodwork, stuff like that. So anyway, that's enough of me rambling on. I want to imagine I want to see some work done. <laughs> I'll do it myself. It's been a long time. I'm just going to give it a, a test run. Um, I'm going to attach the hoover to it so it pulls out all the dust. But just for now, I just want to see whether I've got the right attachment on. I think you'll agree with minimal effort, it's cleaned it up rather well. It's not a dead smooth finish, but I'm not after that. I want the rustic look, as long as it's clean and nice. But yeah, it's going to be okay. I may need to replace the drum sander on that one, but I think I've got the right tool on that one. I've got a belt sander, I might use that as well. And it comes with a, an attachment that you can put into the hoover. It simply connects onto that. A very simple. Now I'm going to try out the EcoFlow, see if it can run the Hoover and this at the same time. I'm just going to change over to the straight chamfer piece, like that, pop into our router. Now this router I've had nearly for 40 years. My mum and dad bought me this, I'll never forget, um, I think it was just before I was 16, uh, just when I was starting out in woodwork and things like that. I had my eye on this in, in a brochure, a catalogue, and uh, before I know it, dad got, it, got me it. So yeah, really do uh, appreciate that. Mum and dad, still going strong. And uh, yeah, I've done quite some work with it. So good quality tools do pay in the long run. But don't get me wrong, I've bought cheap tools over the time. Sometimes you have to. But this one has definitely earned its keep. Just got to make sure I do now. <laughs> what do you think? Are you getting value for money on this channel? Let me know in the comments. Okay, nearly ready. Now it's very important that you use a mask with routers because it's very fine dust. And also when you're not using your mask, some are disposable, you have to replace them every day. Some you can wear a little bit longer. Keep them in a sealed bag. You know, you don't want dirt and stuff getting in the inside of it, so. Okay, nearly ready. Correct speed.
So that's the detailing that I'm after. I stop there and then chamfered and then that'll go to the top. It'll be stopped just short of where it finishes. So yeah, great detailing. Right, I've got to go out now because we've had no hot water now for quite some time. Um, over the holidays, the shots were shut. The boiler broke, so we've had no hot water, which didn't go down too well, but <laughs> there's not much I could do about that. So today the shops are open, so I've got to go out and get the boiler element, got to get that wired up, and hopefully, oh, after quite a few days, I can have a nice hot bath tonight. So. so now that I'm back on track with the renovations, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell reminder button so you don't miss any upcoming videos. We have a great community on the... Uh, uh, live chat before the video goes out and whilst it's going so if you want to join me on there feel free thanks again for all your you know su your support your donations and your patience sorry there hasn't been many videos out but we're back to full speed now see you all in the next one bye for now